Hey guys, Pat here from Rent Country. God is good all the time. And what did I just do? <laughs> no, that's not a coffin. It's not even a boat. It's a billiards table. At any rate, um, I just picked this up today. And I was a little bit intimidated at first about disassembling it and reassembling it. But uh, I figure, well, a man made it. A man can take it apart. It's just a matter of putting it back together again. <laughs> it didn't take me a whole lot of time to disassemble it. It took me about... I'd never done this before. So it took me about maybe in, in between an hour and two hours. I didn't time myself, but it's somewhere within that uh, time frame. If I was to do it again, it'd be a lot faster. I need to go ahead, go ahead and get this thing unloaded because it's sprinkling out here. And I need to hurry up and get this dried off and work on assembly. Okay, the first step is to level up the framework, leveling up each end. On, and we run the level on each one of these support on the outside support from end to end and from side to side and something as thin as a piece of paper works good for shimming uh, we have a few pieces of paper underneath this end and a few pieces of paper underneath this end and it works well for shimming so this is the first step and we have we have the perimeter of the frame all level clear around and we used two different levels to verify level so we're in good shape there now we're ready to put up the slate on now the slates that we're putting on are all one inch slate cut from the same piece of slate from the singular piece of slate these particular slates were made in Italy from the shipping sticker on the bottom shows and uh, you can get slate and I believe it's three quarter inch seven eighths and then one inch uh, the thicker the slate the better it is the more stability you have and it's better to from what I understand get the real slate not the uh, synthetic slate that you can buy out there because uh, from what I also gather, it might last up to seven years. And then you have to, you know, depending on humidity and temperature and all that good fun stuff and how much you play on it. And, uh, but anyways, this, this slate here is, is uh, the most stable for, as far as what I read up on. So each one of these slates are numbered. This one here goes on this end, right? And the center, the center of this beam here meets up with the center or the edge of this uh, slate here. This is slate, this is slate number three actually. And there's a, I have a little pencil mark right here, or ink mark, of where the exact center of that is. It's got to be two and a quarter inches off of the edge. That's two, need to go another quarter. That's two and a quarter. And two and a quarter. Should line up, shouldn't they? Should. You measured right. Yeah, it's going in. That one's going in. So I numbered all the positions. Each one of these I put a number on. This represents facing down. Each one of these I have marked up underneath the pool table as well. So here we got a six, 
and a seven, and a five. I'll just put them in there the way they had them, and then we'll check for level again and just go from there. There's number four. Next, and number three. Here's some points that uh, I wanted to share with you guys again. This is the first time I've ever done this, and so it's, it's as new to me as it is possibly to you. <laughs> if you're a professional, you're probably in here saying, huh, that guy did it all wrong. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you that the table's level. It is secure and it is solid. So, again, this is a one-inch slate, three-slate pool table. And a couple of techniques that I've, I've learned uh, on this. I think the best way to do this is put all of the slates on there at the same time. Put the center slate on first. Get it square. You want to center the slate against the frame to where there's an equal distance on this side all the way across. Same on the other side. And centered on the beam that runs through here. There's a beam that runs through each one of the slate ends where they butt together so there's a, a cross beam that runs across here and a beam that runs across this right in here as well and then there's a center beam that runs across the center and your good pool tables are going to have it have have it to where they they link together so there's three beams total in here and they all interlock from what i've read up on and and understood that there are tables out there that have two center beams that run across here and from what I collect the one is just as good as the two you might think well it's a lot stronger but you know slate's pretty strong and you've got a huge beam underneath this the center beam from what I understand and from what I read that there's really no significant advantage from one to the other. So when we set all the slabs on here we went ahead and loosely secured all of the fasteners. These fasteners here are I think maybe two and a half three inch lag bolt lag screws and they go in at an angle and so all the outside ones these are for the rails to mount the rails these run through the slate into the frame. So you have each each slate has has these all along the perimeter of each slate. And as you can see you have two in the center. You have two of the these, these ones actually go straight down in the center, but all of the ones on the edge go at an angle. So when we get all of when we get the slates on there and we get them all centered to the beams and we get equal distance all the way around the perimeter of the slate in relationship you know the table slates in relationship to the uh, frame and get everything square that's when you start to put these lag screws all the way in and in the center but you don't want to drive them home. You don't want to want to suck them down tight. The reason for that is, is you want to get the seam right here, the exact same elevation, and you also want the table slate to be perfectly level. So before we put the slates on, we actually leveled up the frame on the floor. You know, use whatever medium that you need to 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 level these things and I actually used actual sheets of paper in order to get this as perfectly level as I could. <laughs> There's nothing perfect that's man-made but we can get this thing pretty doggone level by just going and using as something as thin as a piece of paper. When I went ahead and put the, all three slates on, 
found center, found square, and put all these uh, lag screws in. Then I started going around with the level. And I started right here at the center and leveled the center slate. You want to make sure, you know, not all levels are created equal. So you want to get a good level, a good quality level. This is just a, uh, like a contractor type level. They have better levels out there than this that are um, actually calibrated. And most of your professional, well, I shouldn't say most of your professional pool table installers will have a calibrated level. But in my opinion, they should if they're in the industry and they're charging you, you know, 500 to 1,000 bucks to install your table for you. You know, you, you want to make sure the thing's level uh, when you're done. So anyway... I focus mostly on the center slate first and then with that in mind as you're leveling all the slates you want to make sure that this slate here and that slate there is in relationship to the center slate and what I mean by that is when you lay your level down your straight edge you want to make sure that you have no light that you can see underneath the level so in order to make sure that there's no light penetration i.e. like you, you can't you can't see any light underneath the the level and the table itself because they might be one might be higher than the other you could probably slip a piece of paper underneath one side and maybe not the other slate so you want to take and you want to loosen or tighten that screw just a little bit each one of these screws to make the table nice and level and the same elevation one from the other so that there's just a nice smooth transition between one slate and the other slate. So the other thing that I'm doing while I'm checking for light and elevation along underneath this level here and between the level and the slate is I'm obviously checking for level all the way around the perimeter of the pool table. And I just keep walking this around, verifying level all the way around the table. I check the center. I check the center here. I check the center on the other side. Then I kind of go cross hatch like this just to verify everything is reading exactly the same as far as being level. So each one of these tables, each one of these tables I level it this way, I check level this way, I check level around the whole perimeter of it, and then I just check it corner to corner of each individual slate. So the other thing you also want to remember, um, a real good quality table is going to be it's going to be one slate at the factory from what I understand and then these slabs because they're so big and heavy they cut these things at the factory from one single piece and they're numbered. This one's numbered one, two, and three. So this slate here you know, when I took this apart, I made sure this slate went exactly in the same position it was when I disassembled it. So I have numbers actually underneath here that I wrote in Sharpie and labeled each one of the areas where this went together. So I even went down and numbered and labeled each wedge that came out from underneath here to level you know to level this underneath underneath the table as well every area underneath the table that had a wedge got a number and exactly where that wedge came out from so I could put all the same wedges back in the same positions where they were when I disassembled the table where I got the table obviously each floor is going to be different no floor is perfectly level so when I level this table, each one of those wedges 
might have moved just a little bit. They either had a little bit more penetration, a little less penetration between the slate and the beam across there, the um, frame beam across here. So, but mo for, for the most part, everything is fairly the same as it was where I picked the table up from. So, as far as tips are concerned, I think that's pretty much it on, on the leveling aspects of the table. It just takes a lot of time. This, this has been set up here like this for mm, a week. So any expansion and contraction that might take place, I really can't see any expansion and contraction taking place because the climate here is about the same. This is moving from a highly humid climate down to a highly dry climate like Arizona or someplace, you know, there might be a little bit of shrinkage going on if it goes to someplace like Arizona because the uh, humidity is different down there than it is up here in Washington. So if it were me moving this to Arizona, I might leave this table setting inside the house with the frame up and just a slate sitting on top of the frame without any leveling at all. Uh, sitting down and maybe set, set it inside where it's going to go for maybe a month or something like that so the table can acclimate to that environment. Um, that might just be overkill. So leave us your comments in the comment section below if you guys are a professional uh, table installer or if you've had experience with this you might add into the comments for us and for folks that are thinking about moving a table you can let folks know how they can do it safely and also uh, there might be some techniques that I'm showing you here that folks might be able to streamline for us but but I'm here to tell you that the table is, is level and I'm just waiting for the felt to come in and I'll explain to you a little bit about felt when it comes in I've found out that there are two basic grades of felt and so I'll talk about that a little bit when the felt comes in. I got new bumpers they just came in uh, for the rails if we've gone down this far the tables over 20 years old so from what I understand the rubber deteriorates over time so if we're if we're this far into it we might as well spend a little extra money to get the new bumpers and put on there while we refelt it we got new felt, we got a better quality felt actually that was on the table. Uh, if we're going to go ahead and do that, we might as well replace the bumpers as well. Now that, now that the table's level, it's secure to the frame, what we're going to do is we're going to seal these butt joints where the slates come together. So with that being said, what I'll do is I'll separate this video into a couple of different segments. The next video, I will show how to seal the uh, seams and then also to refelt and put new bumpers on the rails of the table. Um, hope this helped you guys out. It definitely was a learning curve for me, but I think uh, everything's going to turn out just perfectly. The table's level, so we're in good shape on that. We're just waiting for a few parts to come in for the, for the surfacing. So look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks for stopping by. Take care, and God bless.